now I want to talk about, um, I'll just call this kind of various aspects of monopolies. For lack of a better term, I'll just call this various aspects of monopolies. Um, and in this case, um, let's start first with the comparison of how these look. And so I'll be kind of reviewing this again here. that if firms are perfectly competitive, they look like this. Then, if they are a monopoly, the firm is the market. Demand equals price, but my marginal revenue is steeper, and I have marginal cost. Now, I still follow the same rule. Marginal revenue still equals marginal cost for the profit maximizing quantity. That is still true. Except as you can see here, the marginal revenue is different for the monopoly. Let's start first with the perfectly competitive firm. Not too surprising. MR equals MC, that's determining how much they'll produce. Now, MR equals MC, that's determining my quantity, but now I have to go up to the demand curve to find the price. Again, what I did was I set MR equal to MC, and then I have to go up to the demand curve to find the price. Now, the question, obviously, that you should have here at this point is, why is the marginal revenue different? And the reason why the marginal revenue is less than price for the monopoly is because The firm can only sell more if they lower the price. And in parentheses, I'll add here, and they have to lower the price to everyone. So let's do an example here. If this were a perfectly competitive firm, PC, then if they sold 10 units at $20 a piece, that would obviously bring in $200. And if they sold 12 units, they also can still charge $20. Because remember, the perfectly competitive firm can sell as little or as much as it wants as long as it's charging the market price. And so here I can see that my total revenue went up by $40. My quantity changed by 2 which essentially means that write 40 divided by 2 would give me 20, which is the same as my $20 price. But if I'm a monopoly, it's got to look something like this. Because the only way I can increase the quantity is by lowering the price. But now pay attention here. Now look at what's happening. I got two more customers who are paying me 19 bucks a piece. That means that my total revenue 
went up by 38 bucks because quantity went up by two. But total revenue also went down. Total revenue went down by 10 bucks because 10 paid a dollar less. Which essentially means that the difference between that is 28. So let's confirm here, right? Let's just do the math here. 12 times 19 is 228, and that this is 200. Uh, half of 228, or half of 28, I'm sorry, would be 14. And we can see that that 14 is less than 19. So the marginal revenue curve is always less than the price, primarily because total revenue is going up, because I got more customers, but it's also falling because my existing customers, who used to pay me 20 bucks a piece, now those 10 customers get to pay me 19 bucks a piece. Now, the consequence for all of this um, starts to then emerge, because whereas the perfectly competitive firm that looks like this, and looks like this, perfectly competitive, now again starts to look like this. Here's my price of my monopolist. I'm going to write this as Q subscript M, P subscript M. If this were a perfectly competitive firm, I'm going to put here equals M R if perfectly competitive. which would mean that I'd be right here if I were a monopoly. Let's call this QPC price PC. Price M exceeds price perfectly competitive. Quantity PC exceeds quantity of the monopolist. What is our conclusion from this graph? Monopolists charge higher prices and produce less stuff. And we can see that right here, that the monopolies are charging, the monopolists are hard, charging higher prices and producing less. Now, what also starts to emerge here for the monopolist is this triangle right here. This triangle is known as the deadweight loss. Or what's sometimes called the DWL. The deadweight loss emerges because the monopolist faces an incentive To reduce output. Right, that's what's determining the height of this triangle. It's basically the difference between QPC and QM. Now, deadweight losses are bad from a societal perspective. So the larger the deadweight loss, the larger the incentive the government faces to deregulate this monopolist. Deadweight losses tend to be smaller to the extent that the product has um, greater inelasticity. 
meaning that, for instance, prescription drugs, which the manufacturer in the beginning has a monopoly, they have a patent on the prescription drug, um, we tend to see that the government has no interest in breaking up those monopolies, primarily because the deadweight loss is expected to be very um, little.